And we're back for another Code Peterson tutorial doing some GB Studio. I thought this would be a good time to add to our Prehistorio game by creating a pause menu that can also display like our score or any other kind of statistic that we would like with our game. So this is just continuing from our previous project. You can watch the other ones in this playlist from this channel uh, with my GB Studio things to kind of get to where we are here if you're just joining me for the first time. Otherwise, if you've been following along the whole time, you should have yours exactly like mine is uh, set up or, or pretty close. All right, so to begin with, I want to uh, keep some kind of a score so when these dinosaurs are taken out, it adds to a score. First thing I'll do is I'll select one of these dinosaurs here and we have on hit with player. And this is when we have it to where the if the player jumps on the enemy, then it's going to allow us to destroy that enemy. So looking here at our code. Player bounce slow and deactivates that dinosaur. So then I can add an event right underneath that where that dinosaur has been successfully deactivated. Add an event. And I'm going to select variable increment by one. And on here, we have not selected variable three. So I can click on this. I'll go down here to where it says variable three. And I'm selecting this global variable uh, because I probably, if I made multiple levels for this, I would want it to keep track of those scores throughout all the levels. Otherwise, we could use a local one. All right. Now, what I also might do, because now I'm starting to accumulate a large number of variables for this project, I might actually go here on the left-hand side and rename these variables. Uh, so if we remember last time, our variable zero, if I select on that, I can go up here and rename this. And our variable zero was for whether or not we picked up our key. So I'm going to change this one to keys. And then variable one in our previous tutorial I'll select that over there and then I'll go up here to the top and variable one is going to be bones. That was when we picked this up, how many times we're able to uh, throw bones we get from that piece of meat. And then uh, variable two was our lives. I'll select lives on there. And then variable three is how many dinosaurs we are removing. So I will call this one dinos. And that's just going to help me keep track of things a little bit easier from here on out. Last time we were introducing variables, so I didn't want to get into naming them. But now we're getting to a point where this level's complex enough where I think it'll be easier if we use it this time. Uh, so if I click this up here, this this piece of meat that we used, and we'll see up here on hit with player. Instead of saying variable one, it now says bones because it automatically removes those. So I'm just going to click on those to make sure that it these are named correctly. So this one was key is for keys by increment of one. And then here for the dinosaur, um, dinos is added. So what I will do in this case, I'm going to copy this event where I increase the dinosaur by one. And then I can go to the second dinosaur. And I can paste event after. So it includes that dinos count right there. And then here, 
I will click up here and paste event after so that these dinosaurs have that count. Now, the other way we could take out a dinosaur is if we hit them with the bone. Uh, so then if I go back to my first dinosaur, and that was on hit with player, but we had our bones as our projectile that our character is throwing as a group three collision object. So if we go here and we can see when we select group three, we also have a deactivate the dinosaur, which means it was destroyed there. Um, so then I can click here and paste event after. I could go to the second one, paste event after, and then go to my third one and paste event after. And save my progress. Now, if we jump on any of these dinosaurs, it's storing that variable. And, um, or if we destroy a dinosaur, it, it adds to that variable by one. We're adding an increment of one to our dinos variable. There are a couple of different ways where you can display your score. One of them is a kind of like what we normally see on games where as you're playing your game, you see your score on your screen. That's quite a bit more complicated to do on this. And eventually I do want to put together a tutorial for that. But for right now, this is, I think, is a decent fix uh, to get you by in the meantime. And it, it does work effectively with this also. Uh, so if I select my level one and we have our on in it or our on initial startup here. And if I scroll down here, uh, we have at the beginning of this level, bones is equal to zero, lives is equal to three. I should add an event and search for uh, set variable to value or variable set to value. And uh, this one is going to be finding dinos and that's going to be equal to zero. So when we start our game after a, after a continue, it, it resets our score to zero. And I want to add another event. And this one, I'll search for button. And there's an option in here for attach script to button. Select that on there. And I'll unselect B, or select start, and then unselect B. And for this right here, override default button action doesn't really matter at this point in time. I'll just leave it checked on there as is. Uh, with this on press. So in other words, when I press start, what's going to happen? I'm going to add an event. And I'm looking for display dialog. All right, we'll go in here. And if you remember previously, we've talked about like how this works with three lines in here. So line one, I might say something like, like game paused or something like that. And then underneath that, I can put in there, maybe I want to have uh, the amount of dinosaurs that I've taken out. So I'll click on here and go dinos in a colon. And then after the colon, I'll put in a dollar sign, because if you notice here on the left-hand side, our variables all have a dollar sign in front. I'll type in dollar sign, and I'll type in dinos. And when I start typing it in, it gives me a prompt where I can click on that. And it'll put that in there as dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. And that'll include, that's basically where my score is. There's three dollar signs, I'm guessing, because the highest variable you can have is like maybe 255 or 256 or something like that. Um, there are ways to display higher ones. And again, that, that would be something for a future tutorial. So right now, the way I've been making my games for each enemy destroyed, I just have worth one point uh, just to kind of save me uh, from having to make too complicated of a scoring mechanism on here. Uh, underneath that, 
then I might also put something in here for keys. And I'll put in there uh, dollar sign keys and select that. I only want there to be one section of text on my dialogue here when I'm paused. So that way when I push the jump button to get out of the pause, then it, it can get rid of that. So if I wanted to put a third one in there, maybe I would just take game paused out and do that. But I think this looks good and I can go up to file and save. And now if I run my program, Press enter. All right, there's our directions from what we've done before. Now we can jump and we have that dinosaur jumping around. It's me two tries, I died right away. All right, so successfully landed on it. When I press enter here, dinos picked up one, keys zero. All right, and then uh, enter brings it up because that's what we mapped it as. And then Z on my keyboard or A on my Game Boy, um, the same key to jump is how we exit out of that pause menu. All right, so then I can jump up here, pick this up. All right, and I hit that dinosaur with that bone. Let me, and it kept track of the dinosaur there. So that's good. All right, and we'll check this one here, Dinos 3. All right, and then if we go down here, you need a special key. So we remember that variable from before. And I pick up the key. Now when I press Enter, keys 1. And then there we have our game set up. So hopefully that tutorial makes sense. You know, we renamed some of our variables and we added a new one to keep score of our dinosaurs being destroyed. And then we combine those variables with the dialogue in an on key press script uh, to make a score keeping mechanism uh, in with a pause menu. Let me know if this was helpful in the tutorials. I appreciate those of you who have reached out uh, for ideas for tutorials like this one and other ones. So I'll, as long as you uh, keep Given those requests, I'll try my best to address those in future tutorials, and we'll keep learning how to use this GB Studios together. Thanks for watching.